ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم تسليما كثيرا اما بعد all praise due to Allah and His praise and blessings and peace be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family, his companions, and his followers until the Day of Judgment. I bear witness that Allah is the only one worthy of worship, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his last and final messenger. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a very famous hadith, seven people will be in the shade of Allah. And one of those people, a man who is his heart attached to the masjid. قال ورجل قلبه معلق بالمساجد. His heart attached to the masajid. And today in my khutbah I would like to reflect upon this concept. Especially the winter break is about to start. Where we have a lot of time, especially our children, our kids, our young men and women. And us as a as, as whole, as a community, this is a concept we should constantly remind one another about this concept. A person who has his heart attached to the masjid. يقول النووي رحمه الله معناه أنه شديد المحبة للمساجد والملازمة للجماعة فيها. That means that person loves the masajid so much and loves to pray in congregation in the masjid. And it doesn't necessarily mean that this person always there, or always sitting in the masjid, like 24-7. قال ابن الحجر رحمه الله والظاهر أن التعلق بالمسجد هو كما يقال علقت الشيء إذا وضعته فمعناه أنه معلق قلبه بالمسجد كالقنديل إذا علق في المسجد. ابن حجر سات رحمه الله the great scholar he said this hadith means his heart attached to the masjid it's like when you attach something to something it will be there all the time. he said like it's like in another word hanging hanging on the, to the masjid. so he said it's like when you put in the old days what they do they put a candle or a lamp in the masjid to light the masjid. He said, this is the exactly when you leave, when you hang a curtain and you hang a, something in the masjid. He said, so his heart is hang in the masjid. Qal ibn Hajar, even if his body leaves the masjid, his heart is in the masjid. So even when he's outside, he's connected and thinking and his heart attached and longing to the masjid. Qal ka'annama qalbuhu fil masjid, walaw kana jasaduhu kharijan an. Ta'amal, I want you to reflect upon the word al-masajid. His heart attached to the masajid. It's a plural, not necessarily one masjid. Why? Because your heart is attached to the house of Allah. It's never about click, it's never about, you know, ISTH, it's never about the names. It's about the Baytullah, that this is a masjid, it's not about my masjid, it's not about my you know, represent my group, represent to me, or anything like that. That's not the masajid meant to be. Masajid meant to be Allah. It's for everybody. It's the houses of Allah and serve the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, this hadith is not only related to men, even though the Prophet said, وَرَجُلْ A man. But this applied to men and women as, all, uh, uh, as well. And men were mentioned because the default and the rules of Salatul Jama'ah and establishing the Masajid wajib upon men. They are the one who's supposed to be the, the foundation of the Masjid. Salatul Jama'ah is wajib, wajib and been obligated upon men in the Masajid or according to some scholars, highly recommended for, for men. But it is permissible for women so the rule's different. That's why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised the, masa- the masjid, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, قال فيه رجال. There is men there. And it's a problem 
when our masjid, you see there is more sisters involved in the masjid and attach the masjid than a men. I'd say that's a problem. That's a good thing that the sisters attach and come to the salah. But it's a problem that we don't see the men and the brothers coming more often to the masjid. This hadith is not only to the elders, to the 60s and 70s and 50s and 40s. It's also applied to those who are teenagers. Applied to the young men and women in our community. And that's something make me think a lot. And wallahi, as a father, I ask myself this, and I admit it in front of the world, that maybe I'm not doing a very good job in attaching my children's heart to the masjid. And I see a lot of room of improvement. And I wish that this is not the case in any one of you. And I wish that we all work hard to make sure that we plant these seeds in the mind and the heart of our children. That they should be attached to the masjid as they grow. And attaching to the masjid, it means that your heart is really, as Ibn Hajar said, always there in the masjid, always thinking. One of the brothers once told me, Wallahi, Shaykh, anything happened in my life, for whatever, automatically I think about the masjid. He got a bonus in the end of the year, like these days. He said immediately, when he got the bonus, he said, you know what, 10% is going to go to the master. Yeah, alhamdulillah, that means I can't give the master. Somebody said, get an extra money. He said, I didn't even expecting it. He said, that's the master's nasib. Ask the share of the master. Somebody walking and shopping online, this would be great things for the master to buy. You know, this is a nice thing to do. He passed by a master and he liked it. And he, he see the masjid, he said, you know what, let me stop pray to rakahs in the masjid. Feels sad if a couple of days passed by and he didn't come to the masjid. He feels there's something wrong. His heart, you know, in pain. I don't know how that works. I was for medical condition, not able to come for a while. Wallahi, it's painful that you pay, you pray in the in the home like for four, five, six days or week, and you don't come to the masjid. It's a completely different heart, the heart that it feels pain that it doesn't go to the masjid. I'll tell you, look at yourself. Especially, I'll give give different example. Can you imagine if you are somebody who is very athletic? You go to the gym every week. And you see these guys telling me, Sheikh, you know, I missed the gym. I, you know, it's been three days I didn't work out. But the same person doesn't have the same feeling that it's been three, four days I didn't go to the masjid. You know what? It's been two, three days I didn't watch the series or the movies, whatever. But this heart doesn't feel the pain that it's been three, four days I didn't come to the masjid. Not a heart that touches the message, a heart that feels sad that even I miss one salah. A heart that attached the message, they like to stay in the message. It's not like they rush. You know, you finish the khutbah, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah, <laughs> running out. Teach your kids not to do that. Teach the children when you see them in the masjid, you know what, calm down. We need to learn how, you know, and it's hard in the beginning. It's hard to stay in the masjid. A lot of things come to your mind, but wallahi, the moment you break that, and you start getting into the habit of staying more in the masjid, and waiting from one salah to another, when you have time, basically, not when you have time, you make a time for it. You will see how this will be something that you can even miss it in the, in the future. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised the Sahaba, praised the believers when he said, Rijalul la tulhihim tijaratun wa la bay'un an dhikrillah wa iqami salah wa ita'i zakah There is nothing will prevent them from iqamat al-salah and iqamat al-salah with the ulama agreed it means in the masajid. 
يَخَافُونَ يَوْمًا تَتَقَلَّبُ فِيهِ الْقُلُوبُ وَالْأَبْصَارِ Because they're afraid of a, a, a day where Mixley will be in a great fear. So how can you attach your heart to the masjid? Number one, the more you attach your heart to Allah, the more you will naturally attach your heart to Baytullah. You remember the old sweet days when you're just engaged? You remember these days when you just get to know your loved one? Or maybe you are right now, you love someone, you just want to go to that house, you pass by her house, it's the best time for you to go to visit her in her home. When you love someone, you like to be there. You know, I love to go to my mother's home, because I love her. You know, you love that. There is one place you love, you love the person, you love that person's house. The, and this is the house of Allah. The more you love Allah, the more you will love His house. كلما علقت قلبك بالله تعلق بيتك تعلق قلبك ببيته. This attachment to the masjid is the fruit, is the outcome of attaching your heart, filling your heart with the love of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, longing to Him, loving Him, missing Him. Uh, and being sincere in your ibadah to him, filled your heart with, with hope and, and trust on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. حينما تملأ قلبك رغبة وإنابة ورهبة ومحبة وخوفا وتعظيما وإجلالا وتوكلا وثقة بالله كلما تعلق قلبك ببيت الله. سعيد بن مسيب رحمه الله said من جلس في المسجد فإنما يجالس الله. Those who are sitting in the masjid are sitting with Allah, in Allah's house. I ask you by Allah, compare this to sitting to watch a movie. Compare this to sitting to play a game, to socialize. Also, one of the things that helped to attach your, your heart to the masjid, I want you to think of Muhammad وسلم, because he's our role model, and how his heart was attached to the masjid. First of all, you will see that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have chosen his house to be the closest to the masjid. جَعَلَ بِيُوتَهُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَقْرَبَ الْبِيُوتِ إِلَى الْمَسْجِد Why? Because his heart attached to the masjid. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he prays Fajr, he always stay in the masjid until the sunrise. Can Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he comes back from traveling, the first thing he start with, the first thing, he will go to the masjid, pray to rak'ah. That's a heart attached to the masjid. Before he goes home, because he go to work, the first thing he arrives, he goes pray to Rakah. And this is one of the sunan that mahjura, a sunan that nobody does anymore. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam listened to what Aisha radiallahu anha said. And this is something really motivates me always to come and to care about the masjid, about the masjid and praying in the masjid. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Aisha radiallahu anha مرض النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم مرض مرضا شديدا في آخر عمره. He was very sick in the end of his life, صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم. And he ordered the Muslim to salah, to pray in in congregation, and he ordered Abu Bakr to lead the salah. قال فوجد في نفسه خفة. He was basically they pour on the top of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم's body and they shower him. بسبع قرب باردة من الماء seven container you know the water skin filled with cold water they put in him until the Nabi Sallam regain a little bit of his strength because he has very high fever so the Nabi Sallam was able to stand up and he walked out قالت عائشة فرأيته يهادى بين رجلين he was holding putting his hand around the shoulders of Al-Abbas wa Ali ibn Abi Talib. And some said, no, it was Usama ibn Zayd wa Al-Fadl ibn Al-Abbas. Taqul Aisha radiallahu anha, ka'anni anburu ilayhi, ila rijlayhi, takhuttani fil ardi min al-waja'a. La ilaha illallah. Yani ma yamshi, tishab kida rjulu al ard. Taqul Aisha, anbur ilayhi as if I see him. Why is she saying as if I see him? Because this narration came after the death of the Prophet ﷺ. She was remembering. Because Al-Aswad, he said, I was with Aisha. فَقُلْتُ لِعَائِشَةَ حَدِّثِينَا عَنْ مُوَاضَبَةِ النَّبِي صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لِلصَّلَاةِ 
can you tell us how much the Prophet used to care for the salah? So she got in her memory back to the day in Nabi Sallam basically went out and he, she said and he was holding into the shoulder of Al Abbas or Al Fadl ibn Al Abbas or Usama ibn Zayd or Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. Then she said and he wouldn't even able to take steps. His feet were dragging and I see two lines behind him in the sand. That's all because he doesn't want to miss the jama'ah in the masjid. That's what he wants to be in the masjid. Ibn Qudamah al-Faqih al-Hanbali al-Mashhur, Muhaddith al-Hanbali al-Mashhur, Abdul Ghani al-Maqdisi. Abdul Ghani al-Maqdisi, rahimahullah, before he died, he was in the masjid. And his children told him, let us move you inside the house to be comfortable. He said, what's better than dying in the masjid? When your heart attached the masjid, it's something else. In one of my trips in a nearby state in Louisiana, I went to the enter a masjid, and the masjid, his name was kind of strange. It's called Masjid Abdul Raqib. Or Abdul Shahid, I, I forgot. I think Abdul Raqib. And I asked, what's the secret behind this strange name? They said, that's an African-American brother who used to be in our community. He used to be like a big brother to the community. Take care of the people. But he loved the masjid so much. Clean the masjid, always there in the masjid, taking care of the masjid. And he always say, Ya Rabb, I ask you to die in the masjid. Yeah, and I want to live and die in the masjid. And one day, he was taking a nap in Ramadan, fasting. And a man came into the masjid and he kicked his feet like that. He said, hey, Wake up. So he wake him up. He's a mad man. Abdul Raqib used to help him, to give him food and sometimes money. He said, did you do your shahada today? This guy is not a Muslim, actually. He's just a mad person. And he, this person said, so Abdul Raqib was sleeping, taking a nap after the hall. And he told him, yes, I always say my shahada every day. It's your turn to say it. He said, say it. He said, I want to sleep. Just get away. He said, say it. He said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. He didn't finish it. He pulled the gun and he shot him six shots on the chest. While he's saying that. And he killed him instantly in the masjid. That's why you call the masjid after him. In Patan Rouge. That's a heart. It's so, his, his love, his wish in life to die in the masjid. كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم تقول عائشة إذا حضرت الصلاة خرج المسجد كأننا لا يعرفنا ولا نعرفه. When it comes to the salah, he leaves. That's a heart attack. That's one of the main points today that I want to leave you leave with. That it me if you want to attach your heart to the masjid, attach your heart to the salah, to the importance of salah, the value of the salah in the masjid. I ask Allah عز وجل أن ينفعنا وإياكم بما سمعنا. قلوا ما سمعتم واستغفر الله لي ولكم استغفروا. الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وبعد. One of the things that help you to attach your heart to the masjid is always to think and to read about how the salaf as well, their hearts were attached to the masjid. سعيد المسيب يقول ما فاتتني الجماعة أربعين سنة. I never missed جماعة for forty years. ابن المبارك said I saw one of his teachers سعيد بن زيد missed صلاة in the masjid. He said, "Can you He holding his beard and he's crying that he missed that. And I give you something even you know higher than that. Muhammad ibn ibn Sama'a. He said, "I never missed the first takbirah in the masjid. Yani the first takbirah of the Imam. I never missed it in my life." And the ulama said, "What that means to to uh, to, uh, to basically to catch the first takbirah?" Some ulama said is to be there when the Imam says, Allahu Akbar, you say, Allahu Akbar. Some ulama said, no, you say, Allahu Akbar, before he start reading Al-Fatiha. So even if it is a little bit after he said, Allahu Akbar, but after he read Al-Fatiha, that means you have basically uh, uh, witnessed the first takbir. Some ulama said, even if you do it before the ruku'ah, 
قالوا ان التكبيره الاولى تدرك قبل الركوع يعني if you come before he make ركوع you catch the first تكبيره what's so big deal about the first تكبيره to catch قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من ادرك التكبيره الاولى 40 يوما كتبت له براءتان براءه من النار وبراءه من النفاق 40 days you catch the first تكبيره of the imam you will be giving a guarantee that you are free from hypocrisy and you will not and free from the hellfire you will not be touched by the hellfire a promise from allah so some ulama said that and what it, uh, يعني احسن ما قيل في هذا ان ادراك التكبيره درجات وبهذا تجمع كل الاقوال the catching the first takbira is levels the highest level is to be there before the salah start the next one is to say it before he start the second or he start basically reading the fatiha and the lowest level is to be there before he make the ruku and according to the level of it the level of protection and basically guarantee that you get and reward you get in nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said ma wattana رجل المساجد للصلاة الكلمة وطن فيها معنى المجاهدة someone who will يعني force kind of himself to stay as much as he can in the masjid and, and force himself to not to rush والله even if it's five minutes even if today if after صلاة الجمعة if you have the time to stay a little bit extra five minutes do it العصر الظهر المغرب العشاء and هكذا قال للصلاة والذكر إلا تبشبش الله إليه كما يتبشبش الأهل الغائب بغائبهم إذا قدم عليهم يعني فرح الله به that Allah سبحانه وتعالى be so happy seeing you staying in the masjid coming and staying in the masjid the same way the family who basically waiting for their family member to come back from a long traveling Anyway, it is important to plant these seeds in the heart of our children, as I said earlier. Make sure that you become a role model for your children. Make sure that you always talk to them about Salat al in the Masjid. And the Masjid is not for, for playing, it's not for socializing. These are plus. But the Masjid should be a place where they always know that this is a place of dhikr and ibadah and calmness. A heart is attached to the masjid, it means a heart that attached to the masjid means a heart that cares about supporting the masjid. Always ask, I love it. You know, we have few people who come and say, Sheikh, is there is anything missing to the masjid? Is there anything you guys need to help with? Sheikh, this is like, you know, this is my monthly donation to you guys. You know, I missed that month to give. You know what? In Ramadan, I wasn't here when you did the fundraising. And I, you know, it's not like I'm happy that I avoided fundraising. I wasn't there. No. He's like happy and come back to it. That's a heart that touches the masjid. A heart that touches the masjid always like to make it clean. It hurts me when I see sometimes in Ramadan or outside Ramadan, you know, people see a mess. I'm even talking about not making, seeing the mess and they just pass by it. They don't care. I love it. I know individual here. They always their eyes. This need to be fixed. I can come. I can do. I can do that. That's a heart to touch a mist. Hey, what can I volunteer? What can I do for you guys? This is part of attaching to the masjid, which is imaratul masjid and taking care of it. There is a woman used to clean the masjid, and in Nabi Sallallahu appreciated that so much. And when she died, he asked where she is. He said she died and she was buried. He said, let me see where is her grave. He went to her grave and he prayed janazah on her after she was buried. Honoring her and her memory. Ikhwani, my brothers and sisters, those who come to the masjid and their heart attached to the masjid are among those who Allah subhanahu wa put them in his shade in the day of judgment. The people who Allah raised their deeds, raised their, their, their ranks in Jannah and increase their deeds and erase their misdeeds. Those who have been promised a good life and a good ending. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَانْتِظَارُ الصَّلَاةِ بَعْدَ الصَّلَاةِ مَنْ حَافَظَ عَلَيْهِنْ عَاشَ بِخَيْرٍ وَمَاتَ بِخَيْرٍ 
وَكَانَ مِن ذُنُوبِهِ كَيَوْمِ وَلَدَتْهِ أُمَّةِ Those who care to pray always and to congregate in the masjid, they will live in goodness. They will die in goodness. And they will come in the day of judgment free from sin like children who are just newly born. Those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be so happy to meet them in the dunya and in the akhirah. Those who Allah prepare for them place in Jannah every time they come to the masjid. Those who Allah, the Prophet ﷺ said they'll be giving the glad tidings upon their death with a complete light in the day of judgment. Those, the one who Allah in the hadith, he said, Anadamin, I will take guarantee to protect such people. Those, the people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come, bring the angel and tell them, look at those who come to my masajid. Look at those who their hearts attach to the, mas to the masjid. Those, the people who receive the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-masjidu baytu kulli taqi. Wuruya anil nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that's been reported that the nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said al-masjid is the house of every person who possess taqwa. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us, to make us always attached to the masjid. Take advantage of this break to increase your relationship with the masjid. To increase your children's relationship with the master. And one of the beautiful things we're doing this, this weekend, that we have a full seminar, inshallah, uh, uh, t t textile convention, will be inside the master. It's to bring back people to the roots. I can tell you, and I will end with this, and I hope if this is the only thing you leave with today, I'm happy. There is nothing will guarantee the future and secure the future of your children. And for our community, accept these messages. The master, and nothing else. If we lose every other organization, it's not like losing the master. Astrid is the foundation for the for the community. That's why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi started with it in Medina when he built the community. Make sure that this is something so clear in the mind and the heart of your children. And they so clear in your mind and your heart. Alhamdulillah. I can tell you that I'm so happy, I'm proud and thankful to Allah and to the brothers and sisters who are helping in making this masjid always ready to accommodate you doing their best to make the masjid also ready for you. And as I say always, please, let's clearly like some center always love to make this masjid not one way of communication, but both ways. Your, your suggestions and your feedback is always welcome. Um, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and yunzila rahmatahu alayna. May Allah shower us with, our, with his mercy. Bless this place and bless those who come to this place. Bless their family, bless their wealth. I ask Allah by His names and attributes to forgive our sin and for our parents and to have uh, to get to grant us the best of ending. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive and raise the rank in Jannah for those who serve the masajid, who attend to the masajid, who take care of the masajid. May Allah bless them and their family. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-huda wa al-tuqa wa al-afafa wa al-ghina aghnina bi halalika an haramika wa bi fadlika an man siwak wa salli allahumma wa sallim ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim wa sallim kafirah.